Greetings fellow descendants, my name is Lars, and today we're going to go over the challenges for Season 1. Uh, specifically, we're going to go over the seasonal challenges and the Week 1 and Week 2 challenges. Normally, I would do these uh, as the weeks go by, and I missed last week's with the Week 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to compound Week 1, Week 2, and the seasonal challenges into today's video. Starting next week, every Friday, I will be uploading these uh, for the newest week. So next week will be Thursday. Next week will be week three on Friday. Um, and that'll be the upload schedule for these going forward. Unless I, uh, need to push it back a day for some reason, I will, I'll, uh, make a post about that if that ends up needing to be the case, but it should be fine. Just barring technical difficulties or emergency situations or something, but, uh, all in all should be good. So today we're going to go ahead and talk about the seasonal week one and week two challenges and how to get these done in a quick and easy manner. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So regarding the seasonal challenges, they're mostly going to be where you're going to get your supply coins this time around, just like they were last time. But as I've seen from week one and week two, I don't know how it's going to be going forward. A lot of the the supply coins are front loaded into the seasonal challenges. So these are going to be the big ones to get your supply coins for the battle supply shop for the bunny and Valby. Um, I would advise if you have a specific one of those that you want more than the other, the bunny or the Valby stuff, the first page or the second page to prioritize that first, because I do not know how they're going to roll out the supply coins going forward. So you may not have enough right away to get all of the things you want and you might have to wait till the very very end to get every single thing even then the the way they're putting them out doesn't seem like you have enough to get all of them based on the math right now that i've kind of done but you may be able to i i don't know uh just go ahead and pick out your priority one first um and then hold all your coins to do those but let's go ahead and get into the seasonal challenges real quick i'm going to separate them into the sort of uh generic ones and the invasion specific ones so let's go ahead and start first with the uh, going even deeper and the descendant sweat missions. Uh, going even deeper is clear up, clear a mission on hard difficulty 200 times, and the descendant sweat is clear missions 300 times. So the reason I'm grouping these is because you can get them both done at the same time. You can just do missions, and it will get them done for you. If you do them on hard difficulty, you will progress both simultaneously and that is the probably the best way to go about doing it just do missions on hard difficulty and the best part about this this is the seasonal challenge this is available from the very beginning and you have like 90 days for this season to do these challenges you know it might be less now 88 days so there's 88 days remaining for this season and so you have 88 days to do 200 missions on hard difficulty and 300 missions just in general I wouldn't necessarily prioritize doing any specific mission just to get these done as fast as possible. What I would do is I would go and I would hunt for your reactors. Use this as an opportunity to go after your reactors do or or your um your external components. If you want external components from the the weekly map um, drop stuff, you know, if you go ahead and open up your map, you go to the weekly reward stuff and you look for where the external components or the reactors that you want are that is going to be the best place for you to go ahead and get these done because you're going to be farming for something that you want as well as working towards these at the same time. It's going to get you more bang for your buck in the long run here as opposed to just going and doing like anticipated ambush point or abandoned refinery unit in, you know, sterile land, rockfall or echo swamp abandoned zone respectively. Those are fast missions. You could go burn those through quickly and you could probably rack up a bunch of gold and get these missions progressed by doing those. But you can also get gold, XP, and everything, as well as your reactors and your external components by farming specifically for those and getting these done at the same time. So I would prioritize just focusing on your reactors and your external components if you need them. And if you just need gold, Kuiper, and XP, and you just want to do these quick, 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 um, anticipate an ambush point in Sterile Lands Rockfall and abandoned refinery unit in the abandoned zone in Echo Swamp. Those are probably the fastest missions you could do to try to get these going. Um, these also may uh, be fine to do with uh, Void Fragment missions, so you could probably even do Bunny Cave stuff if you wanted to, if you want absolute speed. If you have something you want to grind for on missions, 
go do that. Otherwise, you can go do those missions I mentioned, or the bunny cave, whatever uh, sounds right to you. Uh, moving on, we have the Going Deeper and the Descendant's Blood missions. These are also kind of overlap each other. Uh, going Deeper, Clear and Intercept Battle on Hard Difficulty, and the Descendant's Blood, Clear and Intercept Battle. So the Hard Difficulty one for Going Deeper, you have to do 60 times. The Descendant's Blood, you have to Clear and Intercept Battle 90 times. The best way to do this is to just go ahead and do them simultaneously. Do, do 90, well, do at least 60 on Hard, and then you could do 30 on any difficulty that you want. My recommendation is find something that you want to farm for, an ultimate weapon, piece, uh, descendant pieces, whatever. Go farm the dungeon related to it, get the amorphous material drops, because you can get two per by doing the dungeons on uh, with the kill score increase on hard difficulty. And then if you get all that going, you can go ahead and then take your amorphous material to whatever intercept bosses you want and crack those open. This is a good way for you to get your hands on more of your ultimate weapon pieces, descendant pieces that you're looking for, your um, energy activator blueprints, your crystallization catalyst blueprints, just all these all these good things that you want, uh, just farm towards those, and then you get these done, these missions done as a byproduct. That's my recommendation. It's so much better to just farm for things you want and then get these done at the same time than just to focus on doing these as they are, because it's only 60 and 90, with, like I said, 88 days remaining from the point of this video. So you have plenty of time to get that many intercept battles done, you know? If you just focus on the going deeper for the hard one, just burn that through as quickly as possible, then you want something quick and easy to get those last 30, you can just go do Gravewalker. The very first uh, intercept battle thing dies in like a second. If you want a hard intercept battle that's very easy to do, uh, that dies quickly, if, you ver if you're strong enough, just go beat up Hard Mode Devourer. That dude is made of paper. I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, that dude is made of paper. If you are not sporting a good enough build for your weapon or like your descendant, that's fine. Dead Bride, I think, is the next easiest for hard mode. I would say Executioner because he's the very first one, but he has that annoying defensive buff that you have to have either a, the, uh, abs uh, the the curse mod to remove it or you need to have like a gun to dispel the buff, like a, a piercing light or something. Or you need to bring SMO who can ult and blow up the buff. Any which way, if you want to do one of those two instead... If you want to do that one instead, that's fine. Just Executioner or Dead Bride if you don't think you can handle Devourer's healing mechanic. But if you can dish out enough damage to deal with that, he goes down so fast. With or without, if, even if you can't burn him down before his healing mechanic is over. That's the best way to go about it. Now let's talk about the invasion related stuff. Since this is going to be key, more key stuff to go over. So first up, let's talk about clear invasion operation. You have to do it 90 times. So this is just do your daily invasions. This is the defiance challenge. Uh, just do your daily invasions. You can do four a day. It's only going to take you, it's going to take you a number of days to get this done if you're doing four a day. And also tying into this is the counterattack challenge, which is labeled as disrupt invasion. You have to do this 25 times. This is what happens when you complete all four of your dailies. You have disrupted the invasion for the day. So you have to do all four to disrupt the invasion. So these kind of go hand in hand. You're clearing the missions to get the disruption, and then you're also getting the clear invasion operation challenge done too. So they're kind of getting done at the same time. After you do 25 times, that's four times 25, that's 100. You've already completed the clear and invasion operation by the time you get counterattack done. So they'll kind of go hand in hand. Just focus on doing your invasion operations every day, all four. Doesn't matter if you get the gold, if, as long as you get them all done. This helps you progress both of these quests. Then we have the Reach Inversion Reinforcement level. So you get Inversion Reinforcement just by doing things, uh, specifically pertaining to Invasion. So if you go do in your Invasion for the day, let me go ahead and show you. If you go do your Invasions for the day, you are going to earn Iron Heart Particles. <clears throat> Those Iron Heart Particles uh, are what push your uh, Invasion uh, Inversion level up. So. Your invasion disruption rate is listed here, zero percent, right? If I go ahead and click on this, click on disrupt invasion, iron heart particles acquired. So you can get a thousand per mission. So you can do you get two missions per day, and you get a thousand per. So that's four runs at five hundred apiece. So you get two thousand iron heart particles from your daily invasion runs, <clears throat> as well as by doing these, you get your disruption for the day. Additionally, you can go to any of the maps 
in the game, you can go to, let's say, White Knight Gulch. And if you see in the bottom right hand corner here, the Iron Heart Particles Collected, this is going to list a bunch of missions for you to do. And when you complete them, such as defeat the commander in White Knight Gulch on hard difficulty. So this would be if I were to go to like the outpost in the mountaintops and I would fight the uh, there's a commando -o boss that comes out there. I could beat that and that will contribute to this. Do that 10 times and I get 450 Iron Heart Particles. I can earn um, 4,500 because there's 10 missions here. So I can earn 4,500 Iron Heart Particles from every single map. Um, so just go ahead and do those for your XP, uh, for your inversion XP. You can check your inversion level at the inversion reinforcement in your inventory in the bottom left. This is where you can see your inversion reinforcement level, and you can see exactly how much you need until the next level. And so as you can see, at 17, it's only 2,600 for the top end. So if I were to go ahead and go complete an entire map, I would get more than enough for a level, probably even close to two levels, depending on how far in I am on the inversion. As well as your 2,000 a day will contribute to this. So just keep doing your invasions every day. Do all of the map-related Ironheart particle collections, um, as I showed you in the bottom right-hand corner of your map for each zone, uh, for each major area, you can get more stuff. And just follow what it says to do in order to acquire your inversion uh, XP. And then once you've get that to 30, that completes that challenge. And then you are almost done with the seasonal challenges. So the last seasonal challenge to go over is the face the invasion challenge, which is complete season one episode quests. So all you have to do for this is just progress your quests until you get to the invasion stuff. Once you get there, you have a quest that says you have to do eight or 10 invasions. I think it's 10. Um, invasions so that's yeah it's 10 so you have to do three days of invasions once that's done the following quest you just talk to a couple people and then you get this challenge done it doesn't take long to do once you've started it and get through that invasion part it's just a three-day wait to do all your invasions for that and then you're done most people who've started uh, have probably already finished this one by now so that's all that really needs to be said about that one and with that you're done with your seasonal challenges so Let's go ahead and talk about the week one challenges now. Okay. <clears throat> so for week one, there is only one challenge that rewards you supply coins, and that's clear out the Volgus, which is defeat 5,000 enemies. Very generic challenge. My recommendation, you're going to get a lot of this from doing invasion stuff, but you can also go ahead and go do stuff like seizure missions on any map that you want to. Uh, but I would say just focus on doing your Ironheart Particle stuff or farming for your reactors for the seasonal stuff. That will probably lead you to missions that will get you lots of kills. Additionally, you can go do stuff like the White Knight Gulch. Um, I think it's the Observatory. White Knight Gulch, the Shipment Base. Sorry, you can do White Knight Gulch Shipment Base Fortress Outskirts mission here. This mission is pretty much just you're going to have a seizure mission with like four like points in this in this big barricade here. Lots of enemies will spawn. You can get a lot of enemy kills there. Additionally, you can also go here and do any of these. They're good for lots of enemies. Particularly the Block Kuiper Mining ones are good for lots of enemies and they're quick. So if you want to do some Sterilane Block Kuiper Mining to get some extra kills for that, that'll be also quick and easy. 5,000 seems like a lot, but it's early on in the season, so you're going to get a, a lot of time to go for this. And if you just do a couple missions a day that prioritize a bunch of kills, you should be able to get this done at a reasonable pace. And uh, it's not as bad as the previous see, the previous season with the 200,000 kills. 5,000 with any method. You know, you can use your Descendants abilities, you can use your gun, anything will work easy. Um, that's the only one that gives supply coins, but we'll go over the rest because they are good for some challenge XP. The next one is the Spectre of Kuiper. Acquire Kuiper 1 million. Okay, so if you've been doing the daily event missions, I, pr I talked about in a previous video, short video, you get free gold and free Kuiper every day just by doing a couple things like do a few missions, do a couple of intercept battles. So if you've been doing that, you've probably already acquired your 1 million Kuiper and you're good to go. If you've missed out on that, uh, there's still a couple days left, maybe like a day left or two of that so that you can cash in on. 
Um, aside from that, I would suggest going and doing stuff like Enzo Vaults. You can group up with other people, do hard mode, Enzo Vaults. And what happens is every time someone opens a purple, you get like 78,000 Kuiper. Every time you open a blue, you get 26,000 Kuiper. You roll around and do a couple of those, dismantle a couple of excess, excess blue and purple mods that you don't want, that you don't need, and that should help boost you up to your million at a fairly decent rate. You can also do missions to acquire some, but those are probably going to be the easiest way for you to just get a large bulk quickly. But you have plenty of time to do it, so there's no rush. You could just take your time on it, do some Enzo Vaults, even if you just did the blue ones for the 26,000 on your own. Uh, even without Enzo, you still get a you still get a good chunk. So um, that's a lot of extra Kuiper that you can get your hands on and just stockpile into this. And it's going to count all the way for the next 88 days. So just do whatever you can. Get any Kuiper you get along the way. Dismantle modules as you come across them. And you should be able to build up enough for that. And also double check that video that I mentioned. And go ahead and look at doing the next like day or two of trying to get the daily 100,000s as well. That'll give you a nice little boost if you haven't been doing them up to this point. Um, next up, uh, Diligence, complete Ironheart Particle Collection Quest. We already went over what those were. You have to do 10 of those. So just go pick any map and just do all the quests. If you've already done a couple, that should have already progressed this a little bit. So you can just go finish off one map's quest entirely for the Ironheart Particle Collection, and you'll get this done. So you can do Kingston, because it's the first map, it's, it's gonna be easier. It's also very condensed. Um, that would be my recommendation. Kingston has the fewest excess zones to go through. The enemies are also pretty easy to deal with. And the uh, missions there are pretty straightforward and easy too. So I'd recommend that for doing this, getting this one done pretty quick and easy. Research, com okay, working at the Research Institute, research complete uh, 10 times. So for this one, you just have to research 10 things. You can go and pick out any enhancement materials like your, your adjustment access control units. Like any of those things, you can just go ahead and pile those together and craft uh, small batches of those for like, you know, 30, 40 minutes. So like if you just did phase exchanger, right, this takes a minute, 15 seconds, right? So if you just research this, got that started, that'll be done in under a minute. Then you can just do another phase exchanger. That's going to take 18 seconds to complete one. You can do that. You can go ahead to the precision phase exchanger. That's going to take five minutes. You can just add one of those too. You can go to this adjustment control axis. That's going to take him two minutes. Let me try this one. 15 seconds. Do that one. And would you look at that? Phase exchanger done. Adjustment control axis will be done in a second, too. You can start the next phase exchanger. Just get another one going. If you want to get done quick, that's my recommendation. Just boom. Just do those real quick. You just make one at a time. They're not going to take up any of your space because they're just going to be done as fast as you've started them. And you can just go ahead and go through that process to get these done quick and easy. Up next, we have complete the research of energy activators. Uh, one of one for breaking the limit challenge. So you need an energy activator blueprint. There's no getting around that. And then the same thing with optimization condition. Complete the research of crystallization catalyst three of three. So for that one... If you've been doing, if you did the the event quests, there's a limited time event quest section uh, in the video. There was three things to do. Each one of them awarded a crystallization catalyst blueprint. They would they gave you three of them for free. So if you haven't done that so far, go check that video and go get those done real quick. Um, and then anyone who has done them so far, boom, you should have three. Just farm up the materials to make them, and you're good to go. And that one that one will be done. Energy activators, on the other hand, you are going to have to probably go farm for one of those blueprints. And since they're just 6 or 3% on any given amorphous material that they come on, there's no like guarantee that this is the best one to do. Uh, my advice is, just like what I said for the seasonal challenge for doing the intercept battles, find something you want to farm for that also has energy activator blueprints on it and just farm for that material, and there's a chance that you'll get energy activator blueprints at the same time. I would never specifically try and just target farm energy activator blueprints because I would just get upset every time I opened the material and it didn't have it, you know? You can do 76, which comes from Vesper's Hard Sepulture. Um, you could do 77, which comes Vesper's Hard Sepulchre. You know, you could do, you could go for those. 
Or if you want to farm the shelter, you can go for shelter for a close crystallization catalyst and the 79. So the sepulchre or the shelter dungeons, you can just run those, whichever one you find faster. And then beat up devourer, that gives you your fastest route to it for these. Last up, uh, I'm going to craft them and obtain an ultimate weapon. Uh, so that one, uh, my recommendation is go and farm Thunder Cage. If you do not have a Thunder Cage yet, go farm a Thunder Cage. Thunder Cage is a weapon that you can farm. So you farm it on normal. You can get a piece here from the external reactor battlefield mission, the Thunder Cage Polymer Synctium. You just get the full piece. Uh, over here, it's uh, the High Power Jammer, the Thunder Cage Nanotube Blueprint. Full piece. Get it right there. Over here at the repository, it's the Kuiper Mine, Thunder Cage Synthetic Fiber. Full piece. And then, um, it's this one. The Logistics Facility in the Ironworks gets you the Thunder Cage Blueprint. You just go and farm those full pieces by completing those specific missions on Sterile Land on Normal and get your weapon. Thunder Cage is a great mobbing weapon. It can be useful for bossing, especially when you're early just starting out. If you don't already have a full setup of your Thunder Cage, go farm Thunder Cage. That'll get you your ultimate weapon for this challenge. That'll get you a good weapon to work towards for a wide variety of uses for this game. If you already have that, you can, and you have it in full, you can go ahead and just go farm the Fallen Hope Assault Rifle. It's not as good, but it is another one where you can go farm all the pieces out from uh, one map on normal mode. So... It's in the White Knight Gulch. So your observatory mission here, Fallen Hope Synthetic Fiber in the Eye of Truth on the observatory. Uh, over here in the hatchery, you get the blueprint from the lower hatchery mission. It's right next to this uh, temporary safe zone portal. In the shipment base, you get it from the altar battlefield mission, the Fallen Hope Nanotube. And from the mountaintops, you get it from the borderline of truth mission. The Fallen Hope Polymer Sync Team comes from here. So if you don't have a Thunder Cage, go to the Sterile Lands Normal Mode, find those specific missions I mentioned, you can check them in your access info, and you can go and farm a Thunder Cage. If you already have the Thunder Cage, go and farm this. This is These are both very easy to farm. If you already have an ultimate weapon that you're planning on farming for, or very close to having all the pieces for, then farm that. But if you want one specifically that's really easy to farm so you can get this quest done, uh, go here, do these. Best, best recommendation I can give. And the final week one challenge is grow and thrive. Gain descendant level EXP, 2 million. Take any descendant, anyone, even if they're max level, catalyze them. If they're not max level, if they're like level one, pick them up. Go level them. That's it. Like, just level somebody. If you need to catalyze someone, catalyze them, level them. You can level very quickly on dungeons. You can level quickly doing block hyper mining. You can go and do Bunny Cave. There's a ton of different ways to level. Um, dungeon leveling is now really, really good. I've gotten th from 1 to 40 on Blair when I was, like, um, catalyzing him in, like, five dungeon runs. Maybe six. Um, very quick. So, this one's pretty easy. Just go and level any Descendant. Anyone you want. You don't even need to level a brand new one. Just catalyze one that you're working on and level it again. You're done. Easy. Not much to it. Next up, let's go on to week two. Okay, <clears throat> so week two. This one is very focused on Kingston. There's a lot of stuff you can do on Kingston. We're going to talk about those first. So Kingston Commando, clear seven plus waves of the Kingston Albion Defense uh, spe uh, Special Operation. So what this means is you have to do at least seven waves of the Kingston Defense twice. So just go do it once to the seventh, uh, to, to get to the seven, uh, seventh wave. That's the first checkpoint. And then just abort, and then do it again. Uh, doing any more past that doesn't contribute any more to this quest. I did it to 14, didn't really do anything. As long as you get to wave 7 and clear it um, for that first checkpoint mark, and then leave, you're good. So you just do that two times, and you're good to go. Additionally, this also counts towards the Launch Kingston Operation Challenge, which is defeat 750 enemies on the Kingston Battlefield. So I did it in my first run of the Kingston Special Defense, so you don't need to worry about uh, doing too much for that one. You just do your Kingston stuff for the Special Operation, and you'll get that one done easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Next up is Clear Kingston Missions 2 out of 15. Uh, so 
any Kingston missions on any difficulty, you can do these and you will get uh, credit for this. This does include, if I am not mistaken, this does include, uh, this does include the fusion reactors, I'm pretty sure. I will go ch test it right now. Start the mission. Blow up this guy. Boom. Next one spawns over here. And you're done. Boom. Two of them done. Easy peasy. And then also, let's take a look here. Challenges. Clear Kingston missions. Three of 15 now. So that counts for clearing a Kingston mission for Sweep Kingston. It also gives you two elites for a slightly stronger friend. You can just keep doing this. And also what you can do is once you've done your Sweep Kingston on this, you should have probably racked up about uh, 30 for the defeat elite monsters. You can then go ahead and go and check your your map and look for, like let's check Hagios, right? My R and Heart Particles thing. Defeat elites in Hagios are hard difficulty. So there is elite quests to kill on all these maps. So you can then just go ahead and progress your uh, Iron Heart Particles all over the maps by looking for the elite quests and doing those. That'll help push you for your inversion as well. So you can get a bunch of things done at the same time. Rather than having just to focus on one particular thing in general. You're going to get progress for multiple things at a time. So start here, clear this thing 15 times, get 30 elites out of the way. Then go get your other 45 across all the other maps. Void fusion reactors and just farm the elites off of those as well. Since you don't use up any of your particles, you can restart them right away. And you get multiple elites for every single one now because of the anti-AFK measure they put in. So that'll help you just get that one, both of those done quick and easy. Um, next up, we've got weapon level transmission and weapon dismantling. So weapon dismantling is pretty easy. Whatever weapons you pick up just as you're doing things, just pick them up. Uh, sorry, firearms recycling is weapon dismantling and still powerful is weapon level transmission. So for firearms recycling, for the weapon dismantling, just go and do missions, pick up a bunch of weapons, dismantle them. Just dismantle them as you get them until this is done. It's going to take you maybe like a couple of days of just light playtime. And if you're playing a bunch in one day, you can probably get it done in one day pretty easy. Just boom, dismantle a bunch of things, get you your firearms recycling done easy peasy. Uh, save at least one or at least hold one level 100 weapon for the still powerful weapon level transmission. So normally you just take your ultimate weapons that you want to boost up from level 1 to 100 and just get that done. But if you don't have any on hand that you want to work on that on, uh, don't worry. Here's what you're going to do. You're just going to go to Deslin here. Yeah. And he will sell you level 1 weapons here, right? So just buy three of these weapons. I've already purchased a couple. Take one of them with your phase changers. Weapon level transmission. You're just going to take... As you can see, I've already leveled one of them up. You're just going to go ahead and select another one. And you're going to use that level 100 weapon. And you're going to transmission it. And now, you're going to do that again. And you only need to buy three... You only need to really buy three of these weapons. Because you're going to take your initial level 100 weapon. Put it into the, the blue weapon. Then you're going to take that blue weapon, put it into the next blue weapon, take that blue weapon, put it into the next blue weapon. And then boom, you get the quest done, as I did. Challenge done. And then you only need three of your phase exchangers, your standard phase exchangers. One purple weapon that you've just found anywhere. It doesn't even need to be level 100. It can be level 60. Anything will work. And then you just take Deslin's level 1 weapons, just buy three of them, and do that. I mistakenly thought it was 10, so I bought like 10 of them, uh, but it's really 10 for the next part, which is the the weapon readjustment. So you do weapon readjustment 10 times. And this one is also very easy. Just go ahead and go craft up some of your... Just go ahead and craft up your... Uh, these things. The adjustment control axis. Then take any purple weapon. You can do a purple weapon that you're trying to build up, you can do a purple weapon that you have no business doing anything with whatsoever. 
You just don't want to do anything with it. It's just there for whatever reason. You, you just picked it up off the floor. You don't need it at all. As long as you've got 10 of these, you just go ahead and do this. Just readjust. Readjust. And just keep doing that until you've done it 10 times. And boom, you'll have the, you'll have the challenge done. Easy peasy. If you already have something that you're trying to readjust to get stats for, then do that, you know? But this way, you only use up 10 of these materials on some weapon that you don't really need, and you get the challenge done easy peasy. So, let me see. So we cover this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay, so last one is the Nemesis Challenge, which is defeat enemies in Invasion Operations 1500. So, I've only done my four... Uh, invasion stuff for two days and I've got 500 so it's just gonna take like six days to do this uh, just do your invasions that's all you can do just do your invasions as often as possible and you're just gonna get this done as a byproduct there's nothing really else to do you just have to do them um, bring in a character that has good AoE capabilities so you get more kills as you're doing them too because when you're stuck with like the towers missions you're focused on the towers not as much on the on the enemies so Valby is good. I've been using Blair. He's really good with the fire puddles. Uh, you can use Bunny um, if you want to. You can use um, Freyna's. Poison is fine too. Uh, you can do Bunny hopping Ajax. Just hop around. Just do some damage. Or just bring a Thunder Cage and just blast a couple of them as you go through. Whatever you want to do. Any AoE to help you clear out more enemies while you're doing invasions is best. But otherwise, it's just going to take you six maybe seven days to get this done and there's no real way to speed it up it's just based on the invasion operations available to you so that's uh pretty much it there's not much else to talk about this week and that kind of covers all of the challenges so far okay so that brings us to the end of the challenge video here we covered the seasonal week one and week two challenges with the best recommendations i can kind of give at the current time a lot of these are very generic there's not a ton to really get specific about um, and a lot of them are pertaining to the invasion type mechanic, uh, specifically to either the invasions themselves or the iron heart particles. So you kind of just kind of go and grind those things anyway. Uh, but I gave the best recommendations I could where I found the opportunities to. So that was about all I could do with regards to this one. If any ones that I've recommended you have a better option for, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll take a look. And if I agree, um, I'll go ahead and pin them to the top or I'll uh, hard them or whatever I need to to get them located towards the top so that way the information is more readily available for the viewers because uh, the important thing is that you know we just get the best info out there so if I didn't necessarily call out one of the best options go ahead and let me know one that you found better and I'll go ahead and put it up there so like I said I'm back to doing these on a weekly basis I'll be putting these out every Friday uh, that may not be, they may not be available at the beginning of the Friday, but they will be uploaded on Friday. That way these are ready for people on the weekend, which is when the most amount of people are going to have the most amount of time to be able to get any of this stuff done if they want to. And it also trail into the following week. So you can use them as needed. And these will also be helpful for the next couple weeks while we're just moving through this stuff. So I'll just continue to do that. They'll be uploaded on Friday and that'll be the game plan going forward. I don't know what the next non-challenge video will be for TFD. I maybe a Haley video, but I still have to unlock her. It may be a Jaber video. I'm still trying to piece together some builds on him. Or it may be a uh, something else. But uh, we'll we'll see once I once I have it sort of formulated and whatnot. So yeah, that'll be what we're gonna do going forward. So I want to go ahead and uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more TFD content. And uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and see you guys in the next video. Peace.